Sequels are often worse than the originals, and in this case, we've got five of them. You love the original game, and then you unconditionally buy the sequel. You didn't even look for any reviews because it's going to be good. How could they mess it up? And today on Shinny Vision, we're looking at five 8-bit games where the sequel is somewhat lacklustre. Space Area was a game that, well, blew me away in the arcade, and of course I had to own it on my Amstrad CPC. I was so disappointed by the fact it was vector graphics, but do you know what? Those enemy patterns matched the arcade, and the music was pretty good. It was fast and colourful. Also played well on the Spectrum, and C64 version, yeah, best not talk about that. So, unconditionally, of course, I bought Space Harrier 2, which was published not by Elite, but by Grand Slam. Had this on disc. Now, I hadn't seen Space Harrier 2 in the arcade, which confused me. Perhaps it was in posh arcades and I went to. But, so I loaded up on my Amstrad CPC and was presented with this, which, well, it was full colour, and it has many of the enemies omitted from the Elite version of the game. Although, in this case, the robots are only slightly bigger than your player sprite. And, yes, I was vastly disappointed. It's not a badly coded game, although it does slough up and slow down. But, and we go across the spectrum, it lacks the thrills and spills of the original game. And, of course, there was no arcade version, although you could play it on the arcade on one of those machines that was basically a Mega Drive with many games inside it. And on the Spectrum here, yeah, again, it's disappointing. More polished than the first game on the Spectrum, but doesn't play nearly as well. On the C64, it's an improvement, but the trouble is, it's not a good game to begin with, unlike the original Space Area. And while the C64 version is more competently done than the original version on that system, it's still not much cop with crude graphics with big blocks around them for the masking. A hugely disappointing sequel that's only marginally better on the original Mega Drive. Cashing in on the name and not delivering the goods. Chase HQ, an arcade game I never really cared that much about, although it looked impressive, but I got on my CPC and I loved it. Fast, colourful graphics, all the fun of going along and bashing cars off the road. You hadn't done this before in a game, and it was just, it was programmed so well. You could understand why the magazines raved about the Amstrad and the Spectrum versions, which we're now on. Again, the Specky version is even faster and even smoother than the CPC, and look how detailed the graphics are. It's just fantastic. And while at the time, magazines rated the Amstrad and Spectrum alongside the ST and Amiga versions with similar score. It's the Spectrum and Amstrad versions that still live up to that score today. Best not mention again the C64 version. So Chase HQ2, surely Ocean are just going to update the engine and put out an updated, better game. Let's find out. Oh no, they haven't. They've handed it to the guys who I think did the Spectrum and Amstrad version of OutRun. It's suddenly much more jerky with crude graphics. How Ocean could put this stuff out? Yes, the gameplay slightly improved because you can now shoot the enemy cars to take them out as well as bumping them off, and the original version needed that. But, yeah. Over to the C64, and it is an improvement on the dire, dire, dire original version. It's fast, it's smooth, it's it's not a great game, but it plays far better than that original C64 version. So for 64 versions, yes, this is better than the original, the ori and this is the version you want to have. So you think the Spectrum version will be ported over to the Amstrad, and it kind of is on the GX4000, which I can't show because there's seemingly only one copy in existence. And you can't download it or play it or do anything with it. Although that said, the game is basically the Spectrum version with all the faults, all the frame rate issues, all the crude graphics. It's not a particularly good GX4000 game. 
from what I can see. And it's a shame it wasn't released on the standard Amstrad. Although, frankly, that release would have denigrated the original version. Overall, for Chase HQ 2, if you've got a C64, you can certainly play it over Chase HQ 1. Because, frankly, poking your eyes out is better than the original C64 version. For Spectrum owners, yeah, stick with the original version. I loved Beachhead. So when I saw Beachhead 2 in the newsagent from my Amstrad, then I went, yeah, I'll have some of that. But, oh dear. It's not so much a game as, at times, something you just observe. Level 1, you drop your troops down through a series of walls. Level 2, you have to get them from left to right without being shot by things. It takes forever. Weird things happen on the screen with things coming across the screen. And people try to drop bricks on you it's so slow paced it's absolutely tedious beachhead one required precision and thought beachhead two is is terrible the helicopter level however is quite fun it's like a, a proto swiv but much slower similar to the tank level on beachhead one but again not as good as that tank level it looks worse because that tank level was kind of pseudo 3d as i recall you viewed it from the side and and this is but it's far more crude and, and rather poor on the amstrad the final level which you're looking at on the spectrum sees you throwing sticks or knives at the dictator for no reason i don't understand why both of you are on platforms the spectrum version is even worse than the amstrad version very crude graphics no fun you can play as the dictator or the allies, but again, uh, you know, in two-player mode as well, it just doesn't grab you. C64 version and the Atari 8-bit version as well are more polished, but they still suffer from the lack of gameplay that Beachhead 1 has. It tries to be a more, a more advanced game, but it doesn't manage to be fun. It just manages to be long-winded and slow. It's a shame that Beachhead 2 has the Beachhead name because, again, it manages to take away from a game that I really liked. Everyone loved Count Duckula, voiced by David Jason, kind of the follow-up to Danger Mouse from Cosgrove Hall, and, of course, a shoe-in for a colourful computer game. And the first version, as shown here on the C64, has the theme tune you're running across platforms, and collecting things and opening doors, even on the Amstrad with no sound or barely any sound and barely any colour, it's still really smooth and a fun, relatively well thought out budget game. But then we come to Count Duckula 2, a game that's notorious. And we look at the Spectrum version. Yeah, it doesn't have that animation, does it? Duckula has to move around the screens, jumping between platforms that vanish and reappear, battling sprites with two frames of animation, and it's all rather poor. Note how Duckula on this screen can jump off the top of the screen. Remember that for when we see the CPC version in a minute. It's oh so crude, the graphics have been drawn by a five-year-old then we come to the Amstrad version, which is like it's running a Spectrum emulator. Now look at Duckula here. Yep, on the Spectrum version, you can jump off the top of the screen, enabling you to get onto platforms. On the Amstrad version, you can't even complete screen two because you can't jump where you need to jump. Nobody play tested this game beyond the first screen. On the C64, the graphics are, well, at least smooth, but then again, you've got hardware sprite support, so. The C64 can do this stuff with its eyes closed. It still jump on disappearing platforms, so just look how crude this is. Insulting rubbish from Alternative that, again, just how Crossgrove Hall allowed this rubbish out. Did Alternative think they were just sending this to five-year-olds? Absolute insulting total rubbish. No wonder the coders don't have the names on the screen for the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. They must be ashamed of themselves, and rightly so. One of my early favourite games on the CPC was Ya Kung Fu. I used to borrow it from my mate Duncan on tape with some of the other imagined games like Green Beret. 
and it was so wonderful. It was colourful, fun. You could have two-player mode, but the computer was relative. I would say relatively easy to beat, but it didn't seem impossible to beat, yet still having some challenge to the game. So Yeo Kung Fu 2 seemed like a shoe in right? Except Yeo Kung Fu 2 wasn't converted from an arcade game. It was converted from an MSX game, namely this game running on my one of my hit bits. You wander from right to left, battling against flying babies. Looks nice though, here on the MSX. Then after two screens you come to the actual baddie. And the graphics are more crude than the original game. More chunky. And then going, that's the MSX. So over to the Amstrad and your first warning is they're using the system font in the status bar. Nothing indicates a lazy game more than using the system font. The graphics are chunky and poorly animated, nowhere near as smooth as Yi Kung Fu 1. There is more variety in the baddies, which is good. The trouble is, it's just no fun and on the Spectrum version again. It lacks the character and charm of the original. Part of that is the problem of the original MSX game, that it's not as good. But again, on the Spectrum version, look at the font above. It's the system font. There's just nothing says more that we can't be bothered. Over to the C64. And at least we have some nice music. And it's, it's a appearing to be a better game, although we are now in Brown City. Where we, where's this level taking place? In a sewer? But it's more polished. But the trouble is, you can't polish the material that is uh, in this sewer. You take that MSX version, you take it on the C64, you give it better animation than the original version. It's still rubbish though, and nowhere near as good as that original game, certainly on the Amstrad and to an extent the C64. It's just a bit poor. So there we have five 8-bit games that personally disappointed me, and perhaps you as well. The original Space Harrier home ports on the CPC and Spectrum never aim to replicate the arcade, but rather give a taste of it, and that they did accurately. The sequel unfortunately loses that speed and fluidity the Elite game had. And the thing is, you're converting the game from a Mega Drive game, which wasn't much cop to begin with, one of the first releases. Although at least these 64 owners get a better game than their original one. Chase HQ, how could Ocean mess this up? All they had to do was take the original engine from the Spectrum and Amstrad and just update it a bit and add some new stuff. That's all they needed to do, but no, they coded a new game from the ground up and oh dear. How could they take a game that was so highly regarded and turn it into this. Again, like Space Harrier, at least the game for C64 owners is better than their original version. Beachhead takes all the precision and fun out of the first game and turns it into a well. One of the screens you basically seem to wait around while one man plods from left to right. It is incredibly boring. Yes, there's better two player modes. Yes, the C64 and Atari versions are the best and are far more polished than the CPC and Spectrum versions. But overall, it's a rather rubbish experience, even if it does have that top-down helicopter level, but that doesn't even manage to be as good as the tank level on the original game. It's not very good. Kentucky the One was a decent, if unoriginal, budget game, but, you know, you got plenty for your money, even if on the Amstrad you didn't get any music. But this follow-up version, oh my goodness, no wonder the coders didn't put their names on the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. It's terrible and they haven't even play tested it on the cpc because you can't jump off the top of the screen which you need to do to complete some of the screens the animation is poor the graphics are poor it's not been play tested the c64 version is the most polished of the lot but frankly it's diabolical rubbish Yeo kung fu is a great arcade game and for my money the amstrad is the version to have the problem is there was no arcade game to follow up this smash dip game with so like space harrier the publishers turned to a home version to convert, in this case, from the MSX. The Amstrad and Spectrum version is so lackluster they use the system font. It's poor. At least the C64 version is polished and plays relatively well, but frankly, you're still wanting to play the original game. 
And while I wrap up, next Thursday video is the final weekly Chinivision video. Yes, there'll be Chinivision after that, but not every Thursday. And to mark this occasion, it's going to be the 11th of April, the 40th anniversary of the Amstrad CPC 464. So we're going to be going out Alan Sugar style. See you then.